Oh, it's you. You surprised me. Welcome back to another edition of things you like to hear from your girlfriend and not your wife. Today we're going to have a look at radiation. You ever wonder this fuka fuck me thing? Uh, you get an aluminium from over in J.A. Pan. You're wondering how much uh, radiation you're getting. We're going to have a look at that. I got to bring this over to the other side there on account of getting a proper thumbnail. Jesus. There's a lot of gravity in this lead. Ah! There you go, even butter. Oh, it's not actually that heavy. It's just my shoulders completely dickered in preparation for mountain biking season. All right, well, stick a buxom young lady in a bikini over here. YouTube gold. Yeah. What we are going to do, there's a lot of conjecture, especially in the uh, metal arts, metal trades, as to uh, the provenance of certain materials and whether or not they contain excess radiations. There's... Uh, some conjecture, of course, that plastics from certain part of the world have a lot of uh, toxic waste in them. I have no idea. But what one, one thing we can do is check to see some of the samples around the shop here, what kind of ionizing radiation they are off-putting. And by type, I mean dose. If and you're looking down at your syllabus there for uh, quantum electrical, uh, quantum tunneling theory, that's next semester as taught by a disillusioned professor who has no desire to babysit undergraduates. What is tuition nowadays? So that is a radiation testing experts around you. Big screen, big time, 10 figure shows, accurate sensitivity, reliable and by professional measurement by Kelly Inn. That's time. You gotta be ginger careful with these. Oh, looks like it's, somebody's had a go at her already. Peeling the foreskin off to clean off the schmegma. Instructiones, won't be needing those. Hit on. Oh, La Fancy, Rutherford. This is a GM, uh, so that's a Geiger Mueller tube. What works. So essentially, what happens is ionizing radiation. And this symbol doesn't mean radioactive, it means ionizing radiation. That can be any kind of particle or wave. Well, is it a particle or is it a wave? Nobody knows until they look. So what happens in here is there is a high voltage gas tube that is evacuated. It has some, I don't know if it's a radioactive gas. I'm not quite sure what gas is in there, but it's a tube that's lower than atmospheric pressure and um, at high voltage. So what happens is if an ionizing radiation hits it, that could be alpha particle, which is a helium atom, uh, beta particle, which is a, an electron, it could be a gamma ray, could be a X-ray, could be a high energy UV. Uh, probably won't make it through the casement in this. In that case, it could be a positive. All sorts of different stuff. Uh, as I said, if you're looking for a conjecture or a discourse on uh, higher physics, that's next semester. Looks like we'll do the testing. I'll get a baseline here. I'm going to put this in the middle of the shop on some nice piece of dead tree carcass, and we'll get a baseline reading. The thing is, these are very susceptible to vibration because it's a glass tube, so you could bust it. And as you see, there's no calibration certificate on here. All of 60 doll hairs from the usual scumbags. But we will be able to see some trends and some differences. And here we go. Very low, microsievert per hour. And this looks like the mean here or the average. Yeah, average. And then trend, I don't know what that does. So what we'll do here, I'll get some coffee in me, a little shaky. Need some coffee to smooth me out. And uh, we'll let this chooch for 15, 20 minutes. We've been choo choo choochin' away here. We've got a lot of irons in the fire. Let's uh, have a look. Okay, so 50, she's leveled down to 15. This is the instantaneous. I'm sure that goes up to 20, down to 10. Uh, so the background mean is 0.16 microsieverts. Of course, the annual dosage is always in millisieverts per annum, and this is in microsieverts per hour. So in order to get... So just a little background. If you're going into a uranium mine, you got to sit in, of course, somebody droning on and on about radiation. They're going to tell you, your background, your average background radiation dose 
is going to be right around two. Just every, every Cambodian has that. Every, well, it's, I think it's like one, between 1 1.5 and uh, two. And then going down in the uranium mine only increases it by one millisievert per annum. Now looking at this, of course, a microsievert is 10,000, or no, a thousand times less than a millisievert. So if we convert this hour to, bear with me here, if we convert this hour to years, that's, uh, there's 8,760 8, hours in an annum, uh, and we'll, we'll make this 20 just for ease. So 876 times 20 is 16 plus uh, 15, 175,000 know, micro to milli. So that's 1.75 millisieverts per annum that this is reading our doses, which is right in line with where it should be. So that's fantastic. We're getting a regular background radiation. We're gonna get the big ones out of the way. First and foremost, thoriated tungsten electrodes. Now these are radioactive. They emit an ionizing radiation alpha particle, which is a helium atom minus the electrons around it. That's a big, slow moving chunk of mass there. But uh, on the outside of your skin, it just gets stopped by your skin, no problemo. The problem is if you get it inside, then the inverse square law takes into account that all of that energy. So here, they're outside me. All the energy is dissipating all around. There's, there's alpha particles flying all over. But if I get a chunk of that and I swallow it, now all of it's in my body. So that is not good. And it, it doesn't get stopped by my skin. It gets stopped by an internal organ. And there's different, different organs can handle different uh, amounts of radiation. So you wouldn't want to put these in your uh, jeans pocket or close to your ball sack because your ball sack is extremely susceptible to radiation. Surprise, surprise. Now we're going to put this on and we're not going to watch it right away. It should, it should climb. But take no mind of that. We'll, we'll just let it settle down. I'm going to go do something else. I've got a lot of irons in the fire here. Hark. The siren sweet cry of a chirping dosimeter. Yeah, we're pretty high there. She's coming right along. So what, that's, uh, oh, eight times higher than background. So if and you were, that's, yeah. Let's say, I don't know, 16. We'll say 16 millisieverts per annum. Uh, say you're working a mine 12 hour shifts every day. Every day is a job you're still going to be at eight or so, which is very high. Uh, it's, not, it's not advisable to keep these thoriated uh, tungsten electrodes in your pocket. It's very easy to fall into or not get out of the trap of faulty thinking. There's no one easier to fool than yourself. If you have an energy source and you're at a distance from that, you would think if you double the distance, you would half the amount of energy. That would be a graph that looks like this, direct proportionality where energy versus distance and depending on, you know, it's directly proportional. That is not the case with so many physical phenomena in the world around us. Gravity, uh, magnetism, electrostatics, even light from a flashlight follows this inverse square law. And it's not intuitive, especially in light, that the energy drops off precipitously with distance. I think the... The reason that is, is because our eyes are so fucking good at changing the aperture for low light conditions. So you can see a flashlight, a point of light from miles and miles away in outer darkness. But it's, it's because our feedback loops are so good that our eyes can pinpoint that amount of light, that tiny minute amount of light. And it seems like it's quite bright when in actual fact, it's very, very dim. And you get this effect if you ever try to take pictures with film. Uh, cameras, what are not automated, are extremely technically difficult to run because you have to manage how much light is hitting the iris. And uh, that, I think, photographers intrinsically know the inverse square law, but the rest of us schlubs 
just assume that it's directly proportional when in actual fact it's not. Which leads me to tell you that 14 inches away from those thoriated tungsten electrodes is perfectly safe. Thoriated tungsten electrodes are gonna be perfectly safe unless you sleep with them or you ingest them. So as long as you're being careful when you're grinding them, you know, filtering everything through a cigarette, you're gonna be okay. To better illustrate this inverse square law, so we're at background now, or are we? We're about 14 inches away as the, as the crow flies, and we've already gone essentially back down to background. So the other part of the thorium uh, electrode radioactivity I wanted to talk about was the daughter elements, which I don't know what they are, but when, when thorium uh, decays radioactively, it changes to a different element. Now the half-life of thorium, that is, if you take a sample and half of it is changed to the next thing through radioactive decay in its half-life, the half-life is something like the entire uh, age of the universe for thorium, 15 billion years. I don't know what the daughter species are, I think we're going to have to go to the gargle machine to check that out. No, I don't think I know. Ah, dog bless you, Wikipedia. What would I ever... I gave it the office. Okay, so we see the half-life here of thorium. When it has an E and a whole bunch of... A, a 10, that's a long time. What I'd be scared about is the radon, because radon is a radioactive gas. Automagically gets in your lungs. The last 55 seconds is the half-life of that. And then comes over and changes to stable lead. So if you were to look at the 2%, if you were to be around this long and look at the 2% thorium in those thoriated tungsten rods, eventually it would all turn to lead. And yeah, I really ought to uh, have a look at that <laughs> at my inbox. All right, now we got some made in the US and A aluminium 6160. I just do it to get a rise out of you. We're gonna turn it on and run the test. We'll come back once she's averaged out. I think, yeah, we got our mean here, 4.14, which is well within the, the realm of background radiation. I'm dropping down, but it's all, it's up, down, all over town. Uh, very likely spike up to 20, same, same as previous. The thing is about the Geiger-Muller tube, of course, it cannot discern what type of radiation. It doesn't know if it's a, uh, a neutron or a positron or an electron or what kind of emission it is. Now that aluminum from the USNA, pretty anticlimactic, but I think I found the problem. The Realtree ammo mechanics gloves are more for picking up pork grinds at the Walmart. I got on the science gloves now and da da da, made in J.A. Pan. Sadly, for the purposes of a YouTube video, rather anticlimactic. This HSST from J.A. Penn, nothing beyond the background radiation, what we typically see. Now, how would this get contaminated? Excuse me. Contaminated from cobalt-60, which is a cobalt that has been irradiated with a slow neutrons, either in a fission reactor, what has melted down, or some type of dirty bomb or dirty bomb testing. Once that cobalt-60 gets in the steel, pretty damn tough to get out. So there's a, a huge, well, well no, there's, there's a apparently bustling market for low background radiation steel. That's steel produced prior to the nuclear age. Uh, big warships and so forth, what was scuttled in the First World War, all in very high demand because the steel has low background radiation. Why would you want that? instrumentation for high energy particle physics, uh, you know, anything kind of doing all this, well, wore the gloves for a reason, anything doing this kind of fancy dancy sciencey stuff. Now we're going to try some good old American stu steel from Atlas Tubed. Orn. Uh oh, Orn. Ay, 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 la pataria. Son of a diddly, look at that. That is a doorknob. I tried nothing. I'm all out of ideas. We'll get a better instrument, continue this testing in a future video. Maybe have this A part, see what the fuck over. Spanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.
keep the thoriated tungsten out of your pocket.